and and again it's totally useless and you've spent a little bit of money just be thinking you will save a lot and you have it sounds like uh, people who try to sell their houses on their own it doesn't work uh, usually they wind up getting a realtor because they didn't know about all the ins and outs of it uh, for sure but so ideally what is the best way to call Obviously, calling Melinda is the best way right now. But uh, what are the what's the best way to do this to set up a plan? Well, I think working with an experienced estates and trust attorney who who is really going to you know set things and explain things in a very straightforward, understandable way. And and depending on your situation, you know, if you're a younger couple you know, having a will is, is most important. So, you know, especially when, when you have uh, children, minor children to, uh, to appoint a guardian um, for your children, um, if something were to happen to one or both of you. And then as, as um, everyone, as we get older and accumulate more assets and have more of a concern for um, you know, what if I, you know, if, if I do uh, have get incapacitated and, and I'm not able to handle my own financial uh, affairs, um, we often put in place a revocable trust um, for our 55 and plus, you know, clients who are retired and like I say, have more assets and um, concerns to, for re regard to planning for incapacity as well as avoiding probate at their death. And so a, a revocable trust, there are some workarounds, you know, the, the main benefits of revocable trust are, you know, it avoids any sort of guardianship proceeding upon if you become incapacitated during your lifetime. It also completely avoids probate at, at your death. So you're not dealing with court supervised probate and all of your assets being public records so that your nosy neighbor can go down to the courthouse and find out about um, all of your uh, financial affairs and in, in your estate. Um, so a revocable trust takes a little more time to get set up on the front end because it actually involves, you know, you, you're your own trustee. It's completely revocable uh, during your lifetime. You're the only beneficiary during your lifetime. But part of the process is we, you actually retitle your, your home, your, your investment accounts, your savings account and into your name as trustee of your revocable trust. And under the revocable trust document, you appoint a successor trustee who can either ha have the ability to step in during your lifetime if you're no longer able to act as your own trustee or then at your death. And immediately as, you know, as becomes the act, you know, the current trustee and it's seamless in that they continue to, um, you know, be able to access the accounts and sell your assets, pay your bills. So that is really the ideal plan, especially for the, you know, 55 and older clients. We see some uh, workarounds to having a revocable trust, which we discourage people from doing. One of the main things is putting your children's or other families na family members' names on your assets, uh, whether that's a bank account or your home. Um, not not good, not, not good because um, you know your that joint owner has the ability to completely you know withdraw assets from that account and, and, and that's fine. So even if you trust your child or family member that they're not gonna do that, the other drawback is if they were to be sued or go through a divorce because they're a joint owner, that asset could then be potentially subject to that, you know, your, that child's creditors or, you know, ex-spouse. So not a good workaround. It sounds, yeah, it sounds like you don't know what you don't know, and it really is increasingly uh, complex, but how would somebody who's not in your state particularly, how would they find an attorney who specializes in this type of uh, work that they could contact to have this set up? 
Yeah. And I, I've worked with clients who have relatives in other states or they're moving to another state. And so, and they've asked me that question, you know, how do I find a, um, an, an experienced estates and trust attorney uh, in this other uh, location? And my advice is um, there's a couple good uh, places to check the American College of Trust and Estates Council or ACTEC, A C. T-E-C dot, dot com. Um, they have a directory of all their members, and it's a very rigorous uh, process to be to be a member of ACTEC. You have to have you know at least ten years experience in the estates and trusts and estate planning, and so that's a good place to look. They have a, a database that you can search by um, by state. And then I also advise, you know, look at look at the um, every most larger cities have a local estate planning council, as we do he, uh, here in the D, Washington D.C. area. And um, you know, go to their website. They also have a member directory that is is searchable. And you know, those folks are gonna are you're you're gonna have some assurance that they, you know, estate planning, estates and trust is their focus. And, and they have experience working with clients in that area. So if you're, let's say you're an adult child and you're trying to get information from your parent to help you, if you're the one who is going to be the executor or executrix, what other information would be helpful? Like you would want to know the, their doctor's names or, you know, financial advisor. Uh, what about digital passwords and things like that? Uh, in just the few minutes that we have left, I think it would be important to include that. So if you don't mind addressing it, it would be great. Yeah, the digital assets are certainly becoming more uh, of an issue uh, when we're talking about, you know, a lot of us don't get our, our bank account or investment account statements, you know, in the mail anymore. It's all you know, uh, delivered online and, you know, other important pass, you know, password, usernames and passwords for, um, to access, you know, health, you know, health insurance information and that sort of thing. So um, we advise clients, you know, there are services you can use that are, are, are secure where you can um, store and, and save all your username and username and passwords online services like LastPass. Um, but at the very least, and, and what I've done um, for myself is just, you know, leave it, leaving a list of your usernames and passwords. Um, also important, remember leaving the, the login information to actually get into your computer, like the Windows true. password. Very true. Um, <laughs> Doesn't do any good uh, password if you can't access it, that's for sure. Good point. Right. So um, that is becoming more of an issue. And and I, I'll just uh, put a plug in, you know, for financial advisors, you know, a lot of people, you know, again, try and do it, them, do it themselves with regard to their investments. And um, rather than working with a financial advisor who is also, um, you know, who coordinates and over, you know, manages and gets, you know, has the complete, you know, picture of their entire financial and estate plan. And I encourage clients, um, especially as they get older, and maybe if it's just, you know, w the one spouse, you know, kind of does that as his, his or her hobby on the side, you know, in terms of the managing the investment accounts, um, but the other spouse, you know, has no clue. It's really important um, to you know work with a financial advisor because you know they can help coordinate, and especially in times of crisis, if there's a health uh, issue with with a parent, um, you know, have, being in the hospital or you know if if a death occurs, you know that financial advisor, you know, having access to all of the accounts and the information, and you know, hopefully having also coordinated with the estate planning attorney, um, can be invaluable uh, for the family members to depend on, um, especially in the you know those times of you know crisis. Absolutely, and Melinda, you have been 
wonderful to join us today, but I know people will have follow-up questions and they'll want to, you know, know more what to do. Could you please share your website and an email address so that people can contact you? Yes. And so we're actually, uh, we just shortened our, uh, the uh, web domain name for our, our law firm's um, website, which is a bit uh, shorter. So, um, that is um, mccandlaw.com. So it's McCandlish Lillard is the, the firm, uh, but the, the website is mccandlaw.com. And my email is just m-m-e-r-k at mccandlaw.com. And if you Google my name, I uh, just don't include a C in it. Unfortunately, I I am not re of that of that uh, relation. Uh, but it's so it's Melinda and the, and then last name is M E R K. And if you Google my name, it'll take you also right to our firm's website. And you're a very well you're very well published. Um, I've read a lot that you've written. So uh, even if you want to just read up more on it, and then you'll be that much better versed when you do talk to Melinda. But I want to thank you for joining me today. You've really helped uh, clear up a number of uh, misconceptions people have. And I think that, uh, you know what, there's really no excuse now to not have a plan in place. You've made it streamlined. You've showed us the benefits and the of using a an attorney who is capable of handling things and giving us a lot of insight. So I want to thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Debbie, and and thank you for highlighting this very important topic and for you know bringing it to your listeners. Um, be well, everyone. And you too, Melinda. Thank you for joining me.